morning, church. Good morning. Good morning. Now, as touching things offered unto idols, we know that we all have knowledge. Knowledge that puffeth up, but charity edifieth. And if any man think that he knoweth anything, he knoweth nothing, yet as he ought to know. But if any man love God, the same is known of him. As concerning, therefore, the eating of those things that are offered and sacrificed unto idols, we know that an idol is nothing in the world, and there is none other God but one. For though there be that are called gods, whether in heaven or in earth, as there be gods many and lords many, but to us there is but one God, the Father, of whom are all things, and we in him, and one Lord Jesus Christ, by whom are all things, and we by him. I have read to you from 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verses 1 through 6. And may the Lord add a blessing to the reading and the hearing of his word. Most Holy Father, we come to you this morning with bowed down head. We want to thank you for forgiving us of our sins. We want to thank and praise you because you're a good God and you can do anything but fail. We want to thank you for your word. This is our road map, Father. This is our guide to lead us into truth. And we just want to thank you for it. When we woke up this morning, all I could think is to say hallelujah, thank you Lord Jesus. Thank you that you brought me here today safely into the house of the Lord. And my main purpose today is to worship you. As we go through our Sunday school lesson this morning, I pray that all minds are clear, that we can take in your word, understand your word, and be doers of your word. I'm asking today, Lord, that you bless those that are here, those that are on their way, and those that are lost and don't know the way. Touch them too, Father. And let them know that without you, they can do absolutely nothing. We will keep them in our prayers. We want to pray today for those that are sick, the shut-in, the bereaved. We want to pray for Sister Christina in her time of bereavement. Ask that you wrap your loving arms of protection around her. And Father, as we go through your word today, we just want to bless you. We want to bless your name. In your son Jesus we pray. Amen. Amen. And with that, we'll ask Sister Winston <coughs> she will please come up and share the word. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Lord. Go ahead and see the number one more time. <laughs> so I'm taking to me as I was getting up. Didn't have to be. Yeah. That's great and mercy. Our lesson comes teaching and healing. The lesson text came from Matthew's fourth chapter, 12 through the 25th verse. It asks, asks us to read, to read related scriptures. Isaiah 9, 1 through 2, 1 Corinthians 1, 27 through 29, Luke 4, 17 through 21, and 7, chapter 7, 19 through 23. Time is A.D. 27, 28. Place is the Puma by the Sea of Galilee. Galilee. Uh, let's read our golden text in unison. It is Matthew, the fourth chapter, and the 23rd verse. Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, and preaching in the gospel of the kingdom, 
and healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. Matthew chapter chapter and the 23rd verse. We're going to start with our reading text that blesses the he that reads the word. We're going to start with Sister Heidi, who asked her, will she read two verses? Start with Matthew the 4th chapter and the 12th verse. that Jesus began to preach and to say, Repent, from far the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And Jesus walked by the sea of Galilee. Saw two feet, brothers, saw two brothers, Samson, how Sam, how Peter, and Andrew, his brother.
they immediately left the city and their father and father. Amen. Take the mic for what you do. Verse 23 and 24. And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, and preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. And his fame went throughout all Syria, and they brought unto him all sick people that were taken with diverse diseases and torments, and those which were possessed with devils, and those which were lunatic, and those that had the palsy. And he healed them. And why don't you read the last verse for us, 25. And thou found in him great multitudes of people from Galilee and from And may the Lord bless the reading of the church and so our word sanctified in our hearts that we don't sin against him. In our introduction in the teacher's book, read. Suppose you were going to begin a new worthwhile movement. How would you go about achieving your goal? First, you might want to distance yourself from former associates who have fallen into a disfavor. Second, you would find a strategy location to begin. This might be a large urban area or a business center. Third, your message should be one of wide appeal, focusing on the positive aspects of your cause. Fourth, you want to select talent, educated, successful people to aid you in this venture. None of these approaches were used by Christ when he began his ministry. His message and method was variance with conventional wisdom, both ancient and modern. He said God didn't go according to what man would be looking at. But when God does something, you know, whatever he does is right. Whoever he picked is right. So we used to look for educated people. So we're going to go in our lesson telling you about how God is teaching them he that follow him what he wanted to do. How he calls. We're going to find out when he calls, how he calls, and what he expects you to do. He tells you what the mission is before you even begin. So here we start off our lesson in Matthew, the fourth chapter, when you look at uh, how our lesson started out, the first thing I thought about was we saw that the Lord Jesus was identified by John the Baptist, the father of the Holy Spirit, and Satan before he began his ministry, leading up to the cross. So in other words, other words it's telling us we, he, he left us without a doubt how to identify who he is. So right away, he, Satan came upon him. And the time you come, you witnessing for the Lord, Satan's going to come. Jesus came to show us what was going to happen when we be saying that the same thing he was saying, I'm the Son of God, when you say you're a Christian, you're going to get the same attack. Here, he led us this week study his teaching and healing ministry and how you can identify and infiltrate your appointment. He tells you what you have to do and who's going to come and how he's going to come. Here it led us to lead us to it let us know you're going to go through some suffering. You know, here we see that he not only went through suffering, but he was crucified by the Jews and the Roman authorities. Let's observe the teaching and the healing ministry of the Lord. We must also about identify what we should say and do. John the Baptist had been preaching about the kingdom of God, and the Lord Jesus seemed to take imprisonment as a signal to begin his own preaching ministry. I believe God already knew nothing had to trigger him. He has a time plan. So here, I, I'm looking at, he knows that this was the time. God has a time and a season for all things. He wants us to do it properly. Here, the proper time for the pro uh, prophecy that had been set forth that said that he was coming, it was being fulfilled as in our lesson today. God then added much more truth 
about God's will and God's way. First part of our lesson talk about Jesus' preaching ministry. You'll see that our outline gave us conquering the doctrines, calling disciples, and permissing the mission. Conquering the doctrines. First thing I thought of when I saw that is nobody can conquer but Jesus. Unless you go through Jesus, you can't do it. You can't do it by yourself. Jesus knew that he came to do the work of his father. So at all times, he remembered who he served. You're a servant. You ain't all but nobody. You're a servant. And so here you see Jesus came serving. He didn't come trying to set himself up on a kingdom. So his preacher meant that without a word from God, I don't care who you are, you're in spiritual darkness. The word is what gives you life. Here we see as it developed in our lesson today. How we're standing here and the doctors had put a spiritual gloom. People look at, oh, people got houses and homes and God. if they ain't got Jesus, they in darkness. If you ain't got that. That's what we started with our lesson today. Let us know. If you don't know Jesus, you're in darkness. Mm -hmm. You can't just say, I know him. You got to study. So to get the light. Mm -hmm. The what? The word to give us the light. Jesus will let them know I came. So that you have the light. Here. All, a lot of times we see the lack of repentance in a lifestyle. Here, let us know. That's what John came preaching. Repentance. I like how in our lesson it's encouraging the followers of Christ because it said if Jesus had to suffer, what about us? <laughs> Here we see conform to the prophet who went before us. Let us know our reward is in heaven. This is not our home. We just visit him. Here God give grace to the suffering. He gave. He asked the crown and grace with glory. Here, God let us know, ye are the salt of the earth. He showed us that preaching the gospel and what all who profess to follow him should be the salt of the earth. Jesus came, and when he came, he descended on his people with the word he prepared. He had other prophets to come before him. When people become self worshippers they degenerate into a self-indulgent and selfless exploitation of others, lying, cheating, and stealing, as the occasion afford them. In any case, people generally tend to lazily forget God and go their own way. You don't put God first. You go on your own. If you're on your own, you're away from God. God is just let go of you. Here it said, John the Baptist had been preaching that they should repent. Uh, in other words, repent means turn from way to way you're going. You're going wrong, turn. The idea is to change your lifestyle, the way you make the city. Here, John the Baptist was committed to turn from sin and to start honoring God. Because he was about to set up his kingdom. That's what we got to cry out. God is coming back. He's sending his son back. And when he comes back, he's going to set up his kingdom. And you, if you want to be there, he's saying, you got to turn from this dog way. Here we said, uh, we see, it was dog in John's time because every time you look around, if you look in the, the world today, that Satan is on a rampage. Everywhere you look, even to one that said they believe. You see, dog was trying to creep in. But here, I see, as I'm reading these verses, God kept saying, ye are the light of the world. Jesus came so we to be represent him. But here it said, Jesus want us to know it's not about us, but it's about Jesus. The Lord began providing the same light, same message. So any way you go, when you come in in Jesus' way, name, name, you don't want to come no other way but in the way Jesus told you. So here, 
we're looking at to see a lesson how Jesus was preaching. And a lot of people think, oh, you got to have all this education and all. But I'm here to tell you, God uh, educates you. He will prepare you. He just put the call now that come unto me. Mm -hmm. Here I see, uh, as I study this lesson, that everybody was out. They want to shine, but they leaving Jesus out. They want to do something and be something without Jesus. Jesus is letting them know, you got to change that lifestyle. Because that's not on me. Here, God, he taught that people are blessed when they honor the Lord and their neighbors. He taught that we must love others, even those who try to hurt us. He spoke to love. I like how he came and said, the Lord began his, the same message. We shouldn't be teaching different lessons when it comes to the gospel. It should be the same. Here, the prophecy that was uh, told to us in, in Isaiah and Michael, it said it's fulfilled this day. He came to the community. And I thought about right away, they said, where Jesus lived. The scripture said, a prophet is not honored in his own family. You ever tried to witness to your family yeah. close? And, and, and for a long time, I didn't understand him. Jesus was preaching, preaching to the Gentiles after they don't, after the Jews rejected him. But you know that it, the word went to the Jews first. They rejected him. But then, like always, God got somebody that wants to hear his word. Here it tells us that the, the land very fertile, not only for farming, but there was also, when you look out into the field, he said, my harvest is plenty, but my laborers are few. Here, it that shouldn't surprise us that Jesus knew about and took advantage of our opportunity. We are having opportunities open up to us today to let God light so shine. And we should allow the Lord to use it. He is not going to say, I'm forcing you to do it. It's a choice. Here, I like how Jesus' message and description of Jesus' ministry on earth, how this tax collector was allowed to write it. A lot of people said, politician can't be a child of God. I'm here to show you. Go back and read the scripture. He can use whoever he wants, and wherever he wants. The idea that Gentiles could also worship God, other Jews was a, like, this was like a revolution because Jesus declared, repent, show the world need for a Savior. See, you're, you don't know you need a Savior until you realize what, how dark you is and what, how dark that you could not come out of the darkness without some help. I like how he got to that point and told us when God came, said his son, we need to respond to the call. The life of faith here, Jesus is still seen. Go out, just like John was doing, carrying a message about Jesus. Here the Galilee Somebody's out there feeling they don't deserve it. But you got to let them know. That's why Jesus came. To let them know it's for all. Whosoever will. Here, if you reject him, said that's on you. But he's still standing there calling. Hear that prophecy. It's for you. Jesus came. Excuse me. And, and when he came, he had someone to introduce him. Here we see consistent in Jesus' mission as a savior and most important to us. He traveled to the darkest place. Some people just want to pick a certain place to go and talk. They want to, get, they want to be on exposition at a certain place. When you say, come here, they go, oh no. But you ask God, because some of the darkest places, our God went. Some of the darkest hours that you've ever had, God is there waiting, patient. Anything you're going through is dark. That's why when Jesus came, and I said, this is the right time, Chrissy. 
because now you need to open up your understanding that death don't have no more darkness. It just, when you don't know and study, but light don't came. You're, that suffering you saw your mother go through, you ain't got to worry about it no more. You ain't got to go clean up for it no more. You ain't got to take no food. Because God going to take care of all of that. So here, that's where Jesus came to give us light and give it more abundantly. Let that light shine so we need. Coming on the first part, talking about our, our, our um, Jesus preaching ministry, talking about how he's getting us ready to pass on that torch. How it's, it's dark, but light has came. I was listening to a reading of verse 16, and verse 16 just tells the whole thing. Mm -hmm. People which sat in darkness saw great light. Great but light. the thing about it is that they did not recognize it. That's but right. fortunately for us, we do. Mm -hmm. And we do and we do receive that Jesus is is the light. Mm -hmm. And to follow and, and to follow him. And to follow that's that's it's That's so what I get out of this lesson. It's so much. This first part, yes. And, and see, if that new light had come, we'd still be in darkness. Amen. Give us the light. Mm -hmm. yeah. Also, in this first part, I like the way they mapped out the route of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And it says in our studies that when his cousin John the Baptist was doing his ministry mm -hmm. on repentance, and he was taken into prison by Herod, Jesus went on and started where where he left off, and then they routed out where it says, uh, and leaving Nazareth, mm -hmm. he came and dwelt in Capernaum, right. and, and took us on through the borders of Zebulon and Naphtali, mm -hmm. and, and so he was fulfilling prophecy, right. and that prophecy was in our related scriptures mm -hmm. in Isaiah 9. One and two. I'd like to read it. Yeah. It says, uh, Nevertheless, the dimness shall not be such as was in her vexation, when at the first he lightly afflicted the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali, and afterward did more grievously afflict her by the way of the sea beyond Jordan and Galilee of the nations. The people that walked in darkness have seen a great light. They that dwell in the land of the shadow of death upon them hath the light shined. And that was prophesied by Isaiah, just as what we read in the scripture. One soldier pass on, that's what's passing the torch is. The torch just keep going. He always have a witness. Mm -hmm. I like how, you know, he, the whole message is come back to God. Mm -hmm. And as we look at our world today, that's what like that. Mm -hmm. That our uh, wisdom went so far from God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. I learned something from that one too because I have heard out they kept talking about darkness. I really didn't understand what they was what they was talking about when they kept talking about darkness. But then I went to uh, I read a lot of scripture with that for me to understand. And I really didn't get it all together until that sister uh, Prince said until I read nine, one and two. And then I saw it all coming together and I could understand it because I had read Isaiah 42, 7, and then it sent me to 35, 5. But then I read my related scripture, 9, 1, and 2, and that's when I began to understand, understand what was going on. So for me, that made me realize something. When you be reading it, you might have to go everywhere to read it, but it do come together. Yeah. But you, you got you can't conquer without Jesus Christ. Jesus 
just as Peter and Andrew had done, James and John immediately left their boat and set out to follow Christ. When you make up your mind that you want to serve Christ, you got to go this way. And he said, first, you got to start with yourself. You can't go trying to give somebody something you don't have it yourself. So he said, I'll make you fishing with me. Some people want to do it overnight. But if you get here, you'll find out you ever learn. God always opened up that same scripture with so much for you. I like how it went on telling about how the, the company grew and how Jesus went about getting his disciples. Here it says that right away, his cousin, it says James and John was cousins of Jesus. Here we see that Count, he wasn't going around just trying to get his family. He was getting others too. But if you're a child of the king, you're going to be concerned first at home. You start with yourself and they the next closest to you. Here, God wants us to know if I call you, I'll put it. Here, I like how the Son of God called these men to follow him. And when he said it, he wanted us to answer. I'm not going to force it. His spiritual body on earth, at some level, all Christians ought to be involved in trying to reach the lost and bring them to Christ. When I got to that, all I could think about is let your life so shine. The best witness you can do is live it. How a lot of times people say, oh, I'm going to give to this one, ain't going to give to that. That's not like God, the way God works. When his son came, he went all over. In the darkest place, he went to the poorest, he went to the richest, but it says here, he went and followed his followers, he went to the lowest. Fisher, here, I like how it, it said, he had a task and he got a plan. It takes all of us using every value and every avenue that God opened us for the opportunity to pack on the world. That Jesus is not hard to reach. He's right there all the time. All he wants you is to believe. Once you believe, he wants you to repent. They said, turn from your wicked way. So how can you do that if you don't know it? That means you got to read. They said, oh, I read the Bible in a, in a year. But if you go back, hold on, a lot of things you said, oh, did I read this? Because you, know? yeah, you don't read the Bible the same as you read the regular book. Sometimes I get stuck, mm -hmm. and I be in, in, I, I'm in one little book. Sometimes I'm there too much. I keep going back, uh, and, and God give it to me, not just like they said from there. But you, you have somebody come, and God just expounds to you. Here, whether it was the four fishermen and the rich young ruler, a host of other would be disciples. Christ called people to decide one way or the other. Go and ask the apostle. Look at 2.38. Here, that decision is yours. Choose who you will serve today. And don't worry about what people say. What they say you ain't doing. Just go back to this world prayerfully. God will show you. He don't beg anybody. But he said you have not because you ask. No. Here, we see him talking about growing purpose. They knew their purpose. They didn't come with their own wisdom. They had to drop everything that they were doing. That means you got, if you got something that's holding you back from serving God, you might have to drop it. Mm -hmm. Not all the time, because sometimes they, they work through it. I don't see marriage this way. They work through it. That person stayed there. But most of the time, you got to drop them. And then he said, remember, it's not an overnight thing. <coughs> when he called you, he a person. Chosen. Calling disciples. Any comments? Calling disciples. Now is the accepted time. I just want to say one thing. Um, 
asked for the calling. And like you said, they did drop everything. Because even I think in some of our lessons previous uh, related to this, it even said if, if you say, I want to go back and say something to my wife mm -hmm. or my father died, or he dead. said, let the dead bury the dead. That's right. Just come. Mm -hmm. And that's, as, as people that are called, we should have that same attitude. That's right. To just drop what you're doing and come when he called, instead of making all these excuses that we make. That's right. But we, uh, like I told him, I was, I was looking at this, and I told him, I said, you know, a lot of us, we read this, but just think how many times we lay there and say, uh, give me 10 more minutes. Oh, uh, we'll say, uh, oh, then my shoulder's so bad, I can't. I don't find out you can have a pain and you can get into this word and you'll forget about that pain. That doesn't happen to me. I don't see where I felt hurt and I got into the word and the Lord said, He did it to my soul. He had to suffer. Yeah. So when I thought about that, He said, But all suffering helps to make you what you are. I didn't get that, but when God calls and you come into ministry, you're going to run into it. Can you accept that God is with you and go through whatever you have to go through? Here, like they talk about, they leaving, the impact of leaving home, mother, their comfort zone. I thought about that. We get comfort sometimes. And what we're doing. Some here, I like how it, the, the interest came saying uh, lies when some teach the work, but they have no hands to roll. Some will be have eyes, but have no light to see. Some will be guided, but have no feet to go. Some deaf yet hear, some dumb yet tongues will be deaf and dumb fit for no use but still in the hospital. But the God that we serve can take these people, these people that have these problems and use them. Mm -hmm. Call them. Following Christ is all right. Following man, he said, choose today who you're going to serve. Don't follow man. He already let us know. They have to come to me. They are not God. They here. He uses all of us. He uses us, and he wants us to love each other. Whether you're a child of God or not, he wants to show love. Here, I like how it says, "What it when it come to the, to God? To God, it's no higher. You ain't gonna set nobody on no pedestal. Don't turn nobody into no God." He kept saying that and commencing about growing and witnessing. Yes, God is going to allow you to do some things. He's going to allow you to <coughs> go through some things. But always give the glory to God. Here, I like how now we're coming back to missing the mission. Here we see Jesus went to their synagogue. I like how they said that. That's what's a public assembly where places where per, uh, persons that's similar together like we do in this house. And it says, when it said that the final verse of Matthew 4, Christ was teaching in their Son of God to read and expound the scripture. In their local Jewish assembly, in his hometown, synagogue was less than enthusiastic. But they was offended in him. But Jesus said unto them, A prophet is not without honor, save in his own country and his own house. Matthew 13, 57. See, they had the scribes and the Pharisees there. And I, I kept looking at this because it said, Jews was not probably older than return from Babylon. It hadn't too long. 
they was erected not only in the city and town, but in countries, especially by the river, that they might have waters for convenience of their frequent washing. So everywhere you look, they were setting up these synagogues. I, I talked about how we got like five right here in this area, churches. Every time you look around, not ten persons composed the synagogue. Here, the number of persons of the independent were skilled lawyers. They was conducting the affairs and keeping up the divine worship. When this number could not be found, no synagogue was built. But there might be many synagogues in one city or town where it was popular. Jerusalem is said to have this. They had where people would travel to come to the synagogue. This need to be a wonder when you consider every Jew was, was obliged to come to worship God in the public place. The chief thing belonging to the synagogue was first the art of the chest, then the pulpit and the desk, then the seat or the pews, the lamps to give light, apartment or utensil, and then it went on to say that they are sometimes called chiefs of Jews with the rulers, the priests, the elders. Service were performed in them there at a time and a day. They had times and order, things in order when they were served, morning, afternoon, and night. The synagogues and the Jews often had the same congregation among each other. Here, preaching the gospel, or proclaiming the glad tidings of the kingdom. Before here, the perfect pattern of an evangelist preacher, he goes about seeking sinners on every side, that he must show them the way to heaven. He proclaimed the glad tidings of the kingdom with the freedom of the king who he served. He makes his reputation the confidence of people not to his own interest, but to the salvation of soul. It ain't about you, but go out and tell somebody about Jesus and what he done for you. Here, he preaches, he, he joins in the ability, all works of mercy, and assists with the bodies of men. He takes care to inform men that disease of all kinds, temporal or evil, are the effects of sin. I don't care what your illness you got, it come from sin. Okay, what trouble you got? It came from sin. So when people say, I don't know where the root started, the root started as sin. Mm -hmm. So here, as we hide to show and increase how <coughs> evil is enduring, and nothing but the power of God can save us from the sin. And that was when you accept the Lord Jesus Christ, all your sins is up on the cross. All you got to do is follow the, the plan, the plan that Jesus gave to him. He always left us away come back to the glad tidings what he is with. He is, he sat there, he let us know all manner of sickness, all manner of disease. Here, people said, uh, sickness and disease is different. Here's the first defined infirmities. Here, you see sick people. Sick people was afflicted with any uh, disease of uh, malaria, like you go and see torment, uh, gout, rheumatism, possessed with devils. You had people that was uh, had demonized. They, uh, they said devil, but we know we only got one devil. Mm -hmm. It was the demon. That's his angel. This is certain obvious of things that happen when people say, oh, they were lost. And many enemies think that sacred writers accommodated themselves to a found prejudice. A common version that rendered the word they possess by devil is not strictly correct. A lot of times we want to put a lot of things on the devil. Perhaps Satan was called because he accused of slandering God in the paradise. The word comes from and because of the influence of his evil suggestion, it let us know in Ephesians 6, 16. God has taken care of that fire, God. Lunatic person afflicted with epilepsy, sometimes we see seizures, and all these disorders, which are also is known, increasing the change and the full of the moon. I thought about what my sister last year was, they said at night, 
she would get worse. And she would fight at night. When Satan go around, he put all these afflictions on you. It's him that's coming to destroy you. Here we see, he is acute. When you see people talk about darkness, that's Satan. That's your connection. Here, a variety of charges in the body of infirmities. Most particularly, those are sensible. And the way our body aches. Alteration, atmosphere. Palsy is defined as a sudden loss of tone and vital power in a certain part of the human body. This can affect a limb. Some people don't lost a leg, the whole side, the tongue, or the whole body. This order is incurable. Here, he healed them. Everything they said that was incurable, God healed them. Either with a word or a touch. And he proved all nations, all things that was happening was under his control. Please, don't stop here. The major part of Jesus' ministry was healing every kind of sickness and the disease that afflicted people. This was an affirmation of his Masonic role. But it should be known that Jesus did not want to be known primarily as a healer. He would not have told people to keep quiet about the miracle. Healing and rescue. Dive of disease and torment. Symptom means very illness and pain. Those possessed with devils was demon possessed. These are distinguished from who are described as lunatic. Probably reference to epilepsy. Those with palsy were suffering from some kind of paralysis. While we all desire pray to pray for physical healing, the greater healing needed is spiritual, accomplished by Christ's sufficient death on the cross. Mm -hmm. Anything you're going through, it was taken from the cross. When Christ came, he confirmed in his mission all disease, all manner. He said, I got control of it. Mm -hmm. So turn it all in his hand, believe, and be a witness. Teach him and heal. And that was his ministry, mm -hmm. teaching and healing. Mm -hmm. And we, as his followers and believers, should be able to do some teaching. Mm -hmm. And healing, too. Mm -hmm. We make excuses. Mm -hmm. I didn't know what to say. Mm -hmm. I, they didn't want to listen to me. But we all should have something to say. Because we're equipped with this word. The fishermen probably felt like they didn't have anything to say. But they had heard of Jesus. And some of them might have even known him before they were called. And so when he called them, they dropped everything. And they followed him a lesson for us to learn from. Uh, as I was looking through this lesson, I saw something that to me was very interesting. And it talked about the tribes, the 12 tribes. If you looked, those of you that have expository in the Jewish aspect, and sometimes, well most times I glance in there because you never know what you're going to see, but it's usually something that you can learn from. And it started off and asked the question, where are the ten lost tribes? And as we have studied, we know that the ten tribes were in the northern part of Israel. And there were two tribes in the southern, which was Judah and Benjamin. 
and they combined to make Judah. And when I looked at this, it talked about Zebulun and Naphtali. Same thing, that route that Jesus took to do his ministry. And it also talked about, it named all of the 12 tribes. And it talked, it said, during most of David's and all of his son Solomon's reign, as king, the tribes were united in one nation of Israel. But then it talked about the split. And you know, Solomon, his heart was turned away from God. And, and God was very displeased. But because he had made a promise to David, he said he wasn't going to take nothing away from Solomon until after he was gone. And that's how the tribes got split. And then, I, can, I don't have time to go through all of this, but those of you that have the book, if you haven't already looked at it, look at it. Because we hear these lessons, whether it's us teaching it or the preacher talking about it. And you want to have this clear in your head so you can understand. You hear us talking about uh, the year of 1948, when the Jews started coming back. And they're still coming back. Okay? They're still coming back. But then there was a lot that went on. And you also hear about that year of 722 B.C. A lot went on then. The king of Israel had hearts fired from God. And as a result, in 70, 722 B.C., after years of deportation, the capital city of Israel, of Israel was conquered by the Assyrians. We remember the Assyrians was rough. <laughs> Boy, they, they, they put some punishment on this people. And then it says Assyria, uh, the Assyrians scattered the ten tribes and replaced them in the land with foreigners. And so then the foreigners married into them. Do you ever wonder where the Samaritans came from? They were mixed. That's when those foreigners went in there with the Israelites and mixed. And so they they became uh, Samaritans. They were half Jew and half Gentile. And that's why people look down on the Samaritans. Like they look on us when we all mixed up and not thoroughbreds. Modern Jews trace their lineage to the nation of Judah, from the tribes of Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. However, both Jewish and Christian prophecies state that all 12 tribes must eventually return to the land of Israel. And it takes us to Revelation 7. So this is an assignment that I'm giving. Read Revelation 7, verses 1 through 8, and find out about those tribes. Because they're going to come back. God put a seal on them. Okay? Don't have to read it now. When you're home, take the time and read it. Revelation 7, verse 1 through 8. Jews from each of the tribes are sealed by God. And this makes it clear that the question of the lost tribes will one day be answered. I thank God for Sister Winston and her presentation of the Sunday School lesson. Because we know darkness is sin. No secret about it. <laughs> That's why everything, Revelation 7, 1 through 8, darkness is sin. But when Jesus walked on the earth, that was light. And that's what they saw. They didn't recognize it, but that was light. So with that, I'm encouraging you all to study. Be prepared for next week's lesson. And... Look at Revelation 7 
and get an idea about those tribes. With that, we're going to ask Deacon Ridgeway to dismiss the class. Amen. Amen. Amen.